Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to talk about a controversial topic that I'm sure will start to gain more and more traction in the weeks to come. It's time to take masks off children, especially in preschools and elementary schools. Let's start with what we do know about how children have fared so far in this pandemic. Thankfully, children continue to be spared from the terrible outcomes we've seen in adults. If a child contracts COVID-19, they're more likely to be asymptomatic, and persons that are asymptomatic tend to spread COVID less often to others around them. And the likelihood of severe disease or death in children continues to remain low and is even lower with vaccination. And the risks seem to be even lowest in kids aged 5 to 11. Even during the highest peak of the Omicron variant surge, hospitalizations in this age group increased only slightly above the very, very low incidence that was already occurring before the surge. You can see from this graph that is updated frequently that this lower gray line shows hospitalizations for children ages 5 to 11 years old. Currently, the CDC guidance on school masking recommends, quote, universal indoor masking by all students ages two and older, all staff, teachers, and visitors to K through 12 schools, regardless of vaccination status. And the highly regarded American Academy of Pediatrics agrees with them. But how does this recommendation compare with others around the world? Well, to start, the World Health Organization recommends against masking children ages five and younger. And for kids aged six to 11, they don't routinely recommend masks. And they counsel against masking kids during physical activities like running outside. Furthermore, the European equivalent of the CDC does not recommend masks for children under the age of 12. And something that surprised me was Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, wrote a letter in November before the Omicron surge to the U.S. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona and the CDC Director Rochelle Walensky asking that discussions begin to determine a way to stop universal masking in schools. The letter stated that, quote, the constant use of masks impedes the learning process and that parents have expressed dismay about their child's overall well-being after wearing a mask continually for well over a year and a half. I couldn't agree more. In the United States, about half of our children remain masked in schools for the foreseeable future, but states vary widely in their requirements. For example, in my state of Texas, mask mandates in schools are banned, but the Austin Independent School District requires masks on all students, staff, and visitors. However, my children all attend a private school where masking was required at the beginning of the school year just for second through fifth grades only, but parents could opt out at any time. And after Christmas, the mask mandate was removed at our school, but still allows any staff, student, or visitor to wear a mask if they choose to do so. Compare this to cities like Portland, Oregon, Los Angeles, California, and New York City that require all children to not only wear masks inside, but also outdoors at recess, which just seems like absolute insanity to me. There's no doubt that a well-fitting surgical mask worn correctly can reduce the spread of prior COVID-19 variants among adults. But with Omicron, because it's so transmissible, really only a well-fitting N95 or the lesser effective KN95 or KF94 should even be considered to prevent transmission. It's even been said that cloth masks likely reduce the chance of Omicron transmission by only 10%. Surgical masks are presumably more effective, and the KN95 and KF94 masks even better, and ending with the N95 mask that's the gold standard. But N95 masks are notoriously difficult to fit and are not made for children. And none of these specific masks, to my knowledge, have been formally tested against the current variant Omicron. And oddly enough, we're seeing school districts like the Berkeley Unified School District in California transitioning their students to KN95 masks. Even the Austin Independent School District is recommending the use of N95 masks, if possible, or double masking for extra protection. I've read many articles and opinion pieces on this subject and think the one written in the Atlantic called The Case Against Masks at School 
gives the most information based on data, most of it from studies performed by the CDC itself. Their conclusion was, quote, the overall takeaway from these studies that schools with mass mandates have lower COVID-19 transmission rates than schools with mass mandates is not justified by the data that have been gathered. Let's go over a few of the studies mentioned in this article so you can determine your own opinion. Your own personal opinion is going to matter in the next few months when school boards make decisions that will affect your children and grandchildren. There's going to be a lot of emotions surrounding this, so I want to give you all data that's based on science and not emotion. The CDC has conducted three studies specifically on the use of masks in schools. The first study from the CDC was before vaccinations were available and studied over 90,000 students, teachers, and staff in kindergarten through fifth grade in Georgia. Of the schools studied, 65% of schools required teacher and staff mask usage, while 51% of the schools required the students to wear masks as well. There was a 21% lower incidence of COVID in schools that required students to wear masks, but the result was not statistically significant. However, the incidence of COVID was 37% lower in schools that required teachers and staff to use masks. The next study conducted by the CDC used data from schools in Arizona from two different counties. The study concluded that schools without mask mandates were more likely to have COVID-19 outbreaks than schools with mask mandates, but the difference in vaccination rates between the two counties was significantly different. And there was also a difference in the amount of days the kids were in schools. The schools with the larger outbreaks were in classes for a longer amount of time during the study and had lower community vaccination rates. And the final study studied counties with and without school mask requirements from July through September 2021. This was such a frustrating study to read because it did not list which specific counties were used in the study. Their conclusion was that counties without mask mandates in schools had larger increases in pediatric COVID-19 case rates compared with counties that had school mask requirements. But as I mentioned, they did not look at community adult vaccination rates, which can be a huge variable in COVID-19 infections. Because at the time of these studies, breakthrough infections with vaccinations were still very uncommon. And therefore, with more vaccinations in the community, there was less COVID-19 transmission period. And communities with higher vaccination rates also tend to have more mask mandates. It's akin to me saying, I drink a glass of orange juice every day and have never gotten COVID-19. And then reporting that drinking a glass of orange juice is the reason I've been protected against COVID-19 without ever mentioning or taking into consideration that I'm also vaccinated and boosted against COVID-19. I would argue that the best study would be the one where all variables are the same, including things like community vaccination rates, school demographics, and time spent in the classroom, except one school district has a mask mandate and the other doesn't. I don't know of a study that's been done like that, but I would call on the CDC and the Department of Education to conduct it as soon as possible or gather data that I'm sure is available and make it public. For those that continue to be concerned about the spread of COVID-19 in schools, I would recommend that we increase in-school and at-home rapid testing. Currently and during the next outbreak and surge, we could effectively use rapid testing to keep kids safely in school. We don't need masks to do that. At this point, we have more data and know what works and what doesn't. And after this recent Omicron surge, can't we all realize that masking in schools has done little to nothing to prevent the spread of this highly transmissible variant? Thankfully, at this point, we have better treatments and vaccinations, and continuing to burden our children with masks is not worth it. At the end of the day, here are my takeaways. Kids don't need to be masked. They have a very, very small risk of serious illness and death from COVID-19, and the risk is even lower if a child is fully vaccinated. Let's lift this burden of wearing masks from our children. Thanks for joining me.